baby is gonna happen today? Uh, I don't know. We're back at the hospital now. We're gonna give this another go. The doctor wanted me to come back just to check to see if I dilated naturally or if I'll just have to wait till Tuesday for them to induce me. So let's see. If I'm six centimeters or more, they're just gonna have me stay. So let's see what happens. Push the baby out. Okay. Push the baby out. Okay, push. Push the baby out. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Oh my god, I hear somebody screaming, she's giving birth, and I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> Sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys, I'm freaking out right now. They just checked me and they told me that my water broke. So I'm actually really happy about that because I read that less than 13% of women's water breaks. So mine broke right before coming here and that means I'm staying tonight. My baby might be coming tonight or tomorrow. I'm so happy. Right now I'm just sitting here waiting. I can't believe that my water broke. Like, I'm still in shock because I was just expecting to wait till Tuesday for them to induce me. I mean, I didn't want that to happen, but that's what the doctor kept saying would happen. So it just comes to show you that you just have to leave things in God's hands. You can't force your baby out. You know, he's going to come whenever he's ready and he surprised me. So he should be here by today or tomorrow. I'm currently eating a Snickers because I haven't had a full meal yet and I'm definitely going to need the energy. So. Jesus went to get me some food. I'm waiting for him to come back so I can eat up. The nurse said that it's still okay to eat food after your water breaks, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then gather my strength again. So as you know, Kim's water broke. I already picked up the, the bags. Now I'm gonna go get some food for Kim because we haven't eaten nothing since this morning and she's gonna need the energy. They just moved me to the room where I'll be delivering the baby. This is what it looks like. The anesthesiologist just came in and he asked me if I wanted the epidural, but I'm still two to three centimeters dilated and I'm not feeling too much pain, so I told him that I'll get back to him on that. I'm just gonna have to wait now. All we can do is play the waiting game. Ooh, I'm starting to feel those contractions getting stronger and stronger. It kind of feels like you have to use the bathroom in a weird way mixed with cramps, like strong, strong, strong cramps. Oh, God. I know they're only going to get stronger, so I'm not even freaking out right now. I have my ice chips here. This is the only thing that I can have from this point on. They decided to induce me a little bit with this clear liquid called Cetotec. They gave me my first dosage of 20 milligrams and they said that every two hours they're gonna come in, give me 20 milligrams and they're gonna boost it to 40. And then by 60 milligrams, I should be giving birth by then. And they also said that I might have to get a little bit of Pitocin put into my IV just to make the process go faster and just to make everything happen a little bit smoother. So they also recommended that I get the epidural because the baby is big and I'm going to be in a lot of pain. So I'm waiting for the anesthesiologist to come in to give me my epidural. So they just gave me the epidural and you're not supposed to move when they stick the needle in your back but just that pinch from the needle it makes you flinch a little bit 
and then you can actually feel the needle like wiggling through your backbone it's so weird and then you feel like this burning sensation oh it's so uncomfortable but it's crazy because I feel more pain now and I feel my contraction stronger now that they gave me the epidural than before they gave it to me so the nurse just went to call the anesthesiologist again he's gonna come back in here and he's gonna give me a higher dosage and by the way out of all the videos that I've seen of like labor and delivery and women getting epidurals not one person has mentioned that they stick a catheter through your pee hole that hurts so bad it's like a long thing I don't know what it is it's just I didn't get to see it but I felt something going in and she's just like cough cough so I coughed and it hurts so bad just know that any woman that gets the epidural has to get that because your feet are so numb your legs are so numb that you won't be able to get up from the bed to go pee every time you have to go so they have to stick that in there so the pee could just drain out of you and I'm in pain so they're gonna go check on that see if they can give me a higher dosage and they might have to redo it so I'm hoping they don't have to because it's painful and I feel every contraction right now I don't want to eat in front of her, so I'm going to eat before she wakes up. Oh, God. Oh, it's so hard being a woman. Oh, men just have to stand there and support us. But it's so hard being a woman. <sighs> oh my god. You guys, I'm in so much pain. But it's gonna be so worth it in a couple hours when I see my baby boy's face. <sighs> oh my god. Whoa. I don't know, but hopefully when they give me the next dosage of that pain relieving epidural. I hope that it takes this uncomfortability away. I feel that catheter all the way in there, like I think she put it in too far. So they just came in and they injected more of the epidural into this little tube right here. It felt like a cooling sensation going down my back and they said that it'll kick in within 10 minutes. So let's see how true that is. Cause right now it's killing me. Oh, and I can't help but laugh. You gotta laugh. Because I feel like if you cry, it makes it worse. So just laugh it out and you'll be all right. Just gonna relax and let it kick in. Oh. <laughs> I feel like when he comes out, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if I just transform into British Kim and I just tell the doctor like everything in British Kim voice I'm just gonna be like oh my god oh this hurts so fucking bad <laughs> and when the baby comes out <laughs> I'm gonna be like oh my god you're the size of a little roast beef <laughs> you're so cute you were so worth it <laughs> I just rang the bell for the nurse to come back into the room because I'm starting to get the chills right now and I feel everything from my right side. I don't feel numb at all. I heard that that's pretty normal when you get the epidural. Everything from my left side is completely numb, but my right side, I feel every single contraction and I feel a throbbing pain. Like, I think that's my ovary. I'm not sure, it just, it hurts really bad. So I'm calling the nurse now. This is like my third cup of ice right now. I'm so thirsty that I'm just going through these like nothing. I feel so much better right now. Jesus helped me turn to my right side because the epidural was only taking control of my left side and my right side, I would feel everything, like all the pain, all the contractions. So the doctor said that if I turn to my right side, it should flow through my body and she was right. It feels so much better now. I'm gonna try to get some rest and let's see what happens in a little while. They might have to come in once the epidural starts fading away and give me a little more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Help. <laughs> so, 
Jesus has me cracking up over here because <laughs> the nurse told me, Gimali, <laughs> when it's time to push, you have to push like you have to take a caca. <laughs> you have to push really hard like you're taking a poo poo. <laughs> oh my God. Right now it's quiet time. All the newborn babies and moms are sleeping, we're trying to get some rest, and we just keep cracking jokes. It's just <laughs> so funny. Oh my God. She's going to come in here and she's going to be like, Kimberly, I understand that you feel a little better. The epidural kicked in, but you have to have some consideration for the other mommies <laughs> and the babies. <laughs> you hear cracking jokes like, like there's nobody else in the hospital. <laughs> Eat your ice chips and be quiet, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the nurse just came in about 10 minutes ago and she told me that I wasn't contracting every one to three minutes like I was. They were a little spaced out. So she decided to give me another dose of the 20 milligrams of Cytotec to drink again. This is my third time and in two hours, she's gonna go ahead and boost it to 40 milligrams. So now for sure, I'm definitely gonna get some rest because I'm gonna need that energy later on. I just got woken up out of my sleep because the contractions were so strong and painful. The epidural was wearing off, but they just came in to give me a little bit more. And the nurse also came in to tell me that my contractions are normal right now. They're coming every one to two minutes, but the moment that they're not as frequent, that she's gonna come in to give me some Pitocin in my IV. So I'm gonna try to get some more rest right now. I'm in so much pain again. Ooh. Oh my God. This is seriously the worst pain that I've ever been through in my life. <sighs> Obviously, it's giving birth to a human being, but they just moved us to another room. Some of the lights weren't working in our other room, so we're here, we're in a new room. <sighs> they need to give me some more of that pain reliever. <sighs> oh boy. So Kim is going through some pains right now. As you can see, she's in agony. The anesthesiologist had to go to an emergency C-section so he can administrate some more um, epidural. Plus the shift is changing so maybe a new one should be coming. But that's going to be in about five minutes. It's going to be alright baby. I know there's a lot of women that say, Oh it was easy. It was a piece of cake. It wasn't that bad. I didn't need the epidural. Hey, some women are different. But this is the worst pain of life. Oh my God, there's nothing worse than this pain right here. <sighs> Kim's contractions are no joke. Look at that wave. So Kim just got another dose of some epidural. Look at her, she's over there knocked out. Boy over there, I feel so bad for her. You can just see the pain in her eyes and hear it in her voice. She's five centimeters dilated. She has five more to go before she starts pushing. So I guess it's okay that she's knocked out. She's gonna need the energy to do that. I think I'm gonna take a nap too. I'm up from my nap right now and I feel so good that I was able to get some rest. Oh, I was in so much pain earlier, but right now I'm about five centimeters dilated and the nurse said that I should be dilating one centimeter every one to two hours. So it's just a matter of waiting. Who knows, we might have a July 4th baby. So the doctor decided to put the oxygen mask on Kim. She wants to make sure that she and the baby are getting enough O2. Hey guys, so the last time that they checked me, they told me that I was eight centimeters dilated. I have two more centimeters to go before I can start pushing this little baby out. They gave me another top off. That's what they call the epidural when they have to keep giving you more and more to relieve the pain because I was pushing without wanting to and it just made me bleed more and more. So they gave me that and now I'm waiting for them to finish up a C-section so that they can come in to see if I dilated so I can start pushing my son out. But while I wait, I'm gonna go ahead and put my baby mask back on. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be all right, baby. You're strong. You were made for this. Oh, fuck. Kim just got another dose of some epidural. Let's see if she progressed. Baby, how you feeling? Give me a thumbs up. This is how you know your husband loves you. 
brushing my naughty hair from laying on this hospital bed for so many hours. Starting to feel pain again. Waiting on my son's arrival. He should be here any minute now. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank. Hello, man. Try to relax. Breathe in slowly. Breathe out slowly. You're gonna have your baby soon, okay? Just relax. Everything's gonna be okay. When you get a contraction, you're gonna push. Breathe in slowly. Breathe out slowly. Okay, take a deep breath and push. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Let it out. Take another deep breath and push with all your might. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Take a deep breath and push again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's coming. 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 So it's coming. 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 Okay, let it out. Take a deep breath and push again. Don't stop, don't stop. Go ahead, push. One, two, three. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Breathe in slowly, breathe out slowly. Breathe in slowly, breathe out slowly. Breathe in slowly. Breathe out slowly. Fill up your lungs, chin, chin to your chest, and push with all your might. One. Two, three, four, four. Constant. keep going, 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 Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, 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 I love him so much.
Look who's coming home today. Oh, my baby. Oh.